card games to success stories and everything in between. Catch the brand new vodcast series, Her Story Unplugged. Celebrating women's voices on 947. Welcome and thank you thank for being you a part of me. Her Story Unplugged. We've never done this before. No, ever. Which is wild. It's the very first time, so I'm excited too for us. I've got a story for you. Uh-huh. The very first time, do you remember a show called Celebrity Fast Facts? Yes. So everyone thinks Bonang's first show was Manhattan Fantasy Challenge, yeah. which is incorrect. Yes. The first time I met you, I thought I had landed a job. So my, <laughs> oh my, God, you didn't tell me this. my age, I've never told you this. Yes. So my agent calls me, says, go to Sasani Studios. Okay. I get there and there's a tall, beautiful girl, but everyone's faffing around her, right? right. So earpiece. Script. I'm like, no, man, why is no one giving me the script? I'm supposed to be hosting this thing. And I was one of the kiddies that was like part of, and you were the host. That's literally the very first time. That is crazy. I I love that show. It was like the studio was like two meters by four meters, but I thought like I had landed the job of my life. And then after that, of course, we have Manhattan Fantasy Challenge. Yes, we do. The very first time most of South Africa was introduced to you was live. Tell us about the process of going from a small kitty show to like the biggest entertainment show in South Africa. Well, you know, it was, uh, it was quite intentional. I had been having conversations with my casting agency and I said to them, I right now just want to move away from the kitty space and get yeah. into adult, you know, uh, programming because you get typecasted yeah. in South Africa. If you do kitty shows for too long and forever, that becomes what it is. So around the age of like 17, 18, had the conversation with her, I was still in university. I auditioned for live two or okay. three times actually. Oh. Um, yeah, I auditioned. Uh, they went back and back again to Urban Brew and finally they teamed me up in my final audition with Andile and then I landed the job I think a couple of days after my 18th birthday if I'm correct it was very weird researching you right because I followed you Um, there's very little about your early life Right, and very little about where Bonang is from we know you're from Mafeking you moved to Leondale Um, but tell us about your upbringing what was that like it was weird but wonderful I grew up in Mafeking up until the age of about like two or three and then my parents divorced and then I moved to Johannesburg but I was born in Mafikeng, and, and a lot of my holidays were shared between mom and dad. So a lot of the time I'd be here during school and then go Mafikeng for holidays. And that continued up until the age of about 16. But yeah. my childhood was wonderful. I was always surrounded by friends and family. I was the only grandchild for a large majority of my childhood. So I was really pampered. I had a lot of, uh, you Nothing's know, changed. spotlight on me. So um, I was like the, the belle of the ball in my family for a very long time. And that's how it was. That's all I know. A lot of love, a lot of hard work. I grew up a lot around a lot of very strong women. So, yeah, that's your, what I know. Your mom being one of the strong women, right? She started yes. Bahagwanath, worked at Telcom, has a beautiful position now as Cecil. What yes. does having a woman that powerful, um, that resilient as your mother yeah. do or mean for a young Bona? I think any person will tell you if the role models are within your family, it makes, it, it makes the job just a little bit easier because you don't have to go to the world to find and identify or, um, you know, kind of spot success or excellence. It's right next to you. Therefore, it becomes sort of bread, you know, yeah. and you, you watch people and I watch my mom become who she is. And that's all I know, hard work. So. It, it, it's molded me, it's made me who I am. There are a lot of doctors and scientists and you know, leaders of fields and industries in my family and that's what I know. So I know the impact that it has when you have those direct influences in your life. And also my mom has helped me because she's an academic, she is a corporate woman. I'm not going to be a entertainment industry. <laughs> well, what? I'm the other side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm very streetwise, so I'm the, the opposite of my mom. So it's a good balance. So how did she, how did she find that? Like, what was her reaction to that? Because I imagine, as an academic herself, she was like, hopefully Bonang will grow up to be. Oh, she absolutely hates it. She hates that I had to leave the U- University of Johannesburg. She hates that I didn't complete my junior degree. She she hates it. So a lot of why I push so hard is just to prove 
myself right and to make sure that she is not disappointed because mm. a lot of the time she wanted me to be in corporate South Africa she wanted me to be successful she wanted me to get my junior master's degree a postgraduate she wanted me to be all of that yeah. but then my life took a completely different turn you know because I'm a creative and I uh, am a, I'm a I use my voice and my face and my talent um, and my, 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 the things that I've been given to make money. And it took a lot of convincing. Mm -hmm. First three jobs up until I think when I got top billing. She's like, all right, okay. okay. She's you like, okay, one. something's happening yeah, here. It, seems like you, it looks like you know what you're doing. She's you know? like, now she's visiting mansions. Yeah, yeah but <laughs> you know, the thing about my mom and having a corporate mom and educated mother is that she helped me with business, you know, with uh, whether it's matters of litigation, whatever it's been. She has really helped me save money. Uh, she's helped me create a business yeah. around what I do. So it's let's, good. Let's talk about how your mom's helped with standing up for yourself as a woman in this business, right? Because it's a very difficult balance to sort of strike. Yeah. You strive for certain things, and if you speak out of turn, or if you say the wrong thing, yeah. then the job is potentially not yeah. yours. Yeah. But at the same time, you have to fight for yourself. Right. What, does, what does that balance mean for you, or how have you found that balance. Men are said to be assertive when they speak up for themselves. Women are said to be divas when they do. I stand up for myself, but it's so funny. I need a man in front of me still. Mm. So I use my lawyers. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, you understand? And oh, if I need something to be said, I would use my manager at the time, which was usually a man, because I still feel their pressure. That still happens to me yeah. till this day where I'm not able to, you know, say what I want or express myself and things that I, I'm taking advantage of only because I'm a young black girl. Uh, but I'm, I still struggle with that. I, I can't say like I, I've overcome it or it's something that I'm, there's a manual to it, but I'm still learning as I go. Yeah. The only way that I know to fight back now is, uh, you know, if you attack my business or my family, I know how to protect that. But it's a strata. Strata. <laughs> <laughs> okay, on a lighter note, they say imitation is the greatest form of flattery. And we scoured the internet and found a lot of imitation. All right. Which speaks to you, right? And, and okay. what you've done for the television landscape. I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but you'll be able to hear it. We've put together a montage of some fabulous young South Africans presenting. But a lot of them sound like you. Take a listen. I just got back from our book launch, which was an absolute success, darlings. And it could never have been the success that it was if it wasn't for you, South Africa. So apparently, though, um, judging from the um, Twitter streets, I supposedly think that I think that I thought that I think that I did. Martin Africa. I just want to say, you know, if you're writing a book and also sipping on your 5,000 Rand champagne at the same time, um, grammatical errors do happen. So I just want to say, South Africa, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for your feedback. Thank you for supporting your girl. Definitely look out for the second book. Thank you. This is Girl V signing out, darlings. I love it. Oh my my God. God. So um, I am usually just a very cordial person. I get at peace. Like a hobona and gasse hoting is stress. So there was this one time when I wanted to take my friend, U Lona Lons Miguel, for a time massage. Hora Akonova Talokanya, what about Bamunula Mahura? Umunula Ditila. Kiri, wait, see, there was this one time when I went by myself and Keenan. Ne hule monate, kiri moto antopit. I eta in ye. Is that how I speak? So I called Lona and as per usual, she is late. Is that how I sound? I mean, that's relative. But I think we can stop the video. But I think it's, I think it's. It's flattering, isn't it? It is. It? Yeah. it is. You know, they, 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 they came up with the term, it's called bonangisms. Yes. And it's because of, uh, you know, the presenting style that I have. You know, the history of South African entertainment, TV, per, p TV hosts, TV personalities, TV presenters aren't really seen as huge celebrities. So when I came around and I created this whole business just from being what they call talking heads, we are able to change the trajectory of how people approach OAPs, on-air personalities. Yeah. And um, I think that's how people think you need to present because I do it so well. But you, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And you, you, that's right, it's true. And I'm glad you took it there because if you think about it, there was the area of the Vinolia Mashikos, yes. right? 
on your jam alleys. It was also the era of what they call continuity presenters, yeah. where in between each show, there'd be somebody speaking yeah. to us, telling us what is coming on, your Zandin Tlapos of life, mm. right? So that was before your era. Yeah. Somehow, we've seen that being like done away, yes. right? The next time we see a TV host is when you host a Miss South Africa. And a round of applause. <laughs> but other than that, do you find like there's a dwindling of the appreciation of television hosting? I think there's a dwindling of careers in entertainment in general. I think our creative industry, entertainment industry, isn't where it was when I came about. And that's why it feels like there aren't any stars because the mechanisms of creating superstars aren't there anymore. I'm a traditional media girl. You did the, the rounds, the radio interviews, you did the, the magazine covers, you did the newspaper interviews. Now, magazines don't exist. Radio is, is fighting with Kevin, podcasting. Uh, Kevin Sorry, yeah, I know. Uh, when he, I had to pause there. <laughs> you know, well, globally, yes, but in South Africa, we're still traditional. But when you look at how superstars were created and why I became a household name is because we had scheduled viewing. We had scheduled listening. And therefore, you all watched the same person, knew the same people. And now our attention is divided times 10. You could be on YouTube, you could be on 947, I could be on a podcast. So we choose our own superstars, right? So the, 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 your, your uh, reach as a superstar has become now niche. And, and becoming a household name is a little bit more difficult now, right? So to say they aren't superstars, they are. It's just we aren't doing enough to put them where they need to be. Speaking of, uh, amongst the many things that you have going on, you're also opening a talent agency. I am, and that's the reason why, yes. I am. So it's like a part production agency, part, I would say, talent hub. Because, you know, South Africans are great and we are fantastic, but we have not mastered talent management. And there's no governance in our entertainment industry. So anyone can wake up tomorrow and become a makeup artist and say that they've, you know, and tomorrow anyone can wake up and be a stylist and say they've styled, you know, whoever they want. There is no governance. People who work in the entertainment industry aren't protected and, you know, whether it's on air or off air, nobody. So that's where it came from. But also, we have so many superstars, but why aren't they where they need to be? Because we don't know how to cultivate them provide for them, and then move them to where they need to be. Nigeria does that very well. They do, but it's right? also, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's also artists in Nigeria supporting one another. Do you feel, I mean, we know South Africa loves you, but do you feel supported particularly by women in the South African entertainment industry? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Women are the biggest consumers of my wine. They're the biggest consumers of my brand. So absolutely, I wouldn't be Bonang if I didn't have an audience. There's, there's multiple opportunities to create other Bonangs. It's just that how Bonang came up, those avenues have changed a little bit. So that's why I wanted to create the agency, number one, to help and become a superman for other people because I had supermen, you know, growing up in my industry. Yeah. Who, who are and, those people for you? Um, there's so many. Dumi Rabanye at SABC One, Leo Mana, Sawuri um, Metzoneng, uh, believe it or not, uh, Andile, Andile Ngube. There are so many people, agent, you know, agents, people in media, journalists, photographers, makeup artists, uh, casting directors, directors. No man is an island. And in order to become successful in the industry, you have to have a wonderful team. So that's what I want my, my, my agency to do. Just help and identify you know, five or six people and push them to where they, I love they need to be. Okay, speaking of business, let's talk about House of B&G. Yes. How did that idea come about? Um, it was many years ago. So I had a show called Being Bonang and on the show, I, I think everybody knows Champagne Darling. Oh, yeah. I love me a good glass of champagne. I, I, so I'm a big celebrity. I love to celebrate myself. I love to celebrate life. Everybody, everything about a good glass of champagne is just the ultimate for me. And when I did Being Bonang, it, it started trending online. You know, all the little innuendos and the little, you know, quotables that we, that we had running. And one of them that stood out was Champagne Darling. And I thought to myself, well, I've sold lingerie for other people, clothes, cars, 
cognac and vodka for other people. Why don't I make my own? You know, using everything that I have. Met up with um, Jeff Greer down in Stellenbosch. He's my wine master. And we came up with the House of B&G. And Did you guys hear he's my wine master? Yes. <laughs> because, you know, like, because yes. people have, like, wine masters. <laughs> No, 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 I am lucky. I, I mean, Jeff Greer has been amazing, you know. Cultivating the taste around B&G has been him and I, you yeah. know. And in 2018, we launched it. We have a brute, we have a rosé. And in 2019, we launched a nectar, which is uh, the sparkling wine in a can, which I think everybody loves. I've been very happy. You know, it comes with its uh, ups and downs. But for me, it's like, yes, you have to commercialize. And I'm glad that I was able to do it for myself okay. with my own thing. The journey hasn't been without drama, turmoil, lawsuits, ask me. Yes. Uh, <laughs> how do you rise above all of the noise? Oh, well, when you're not feeling well, it's okay to not feel okay. You know, I disappear when I'm not feeling okay. In the last two years, I was going through a very severe litigation with my old management company who were obviously trying to scoop up my brand from underneath my feet. And... And, and for the last two years, I, that's all I could concentrate on because it was my heart and soul. And when I do that, I'm Cancerian. And what Cancerians do, we go back into our shell, figure ourselves out, we're okay, then we go back out into the world. And Cancerians are like, I don't know, I, let me speak for myself, but I'm a one-track mind kind of girl. And because I'm a creative, everything that I do comes from how I feel. And if I'm not feeling well, I won't, I won't, I won't hit that link. I won't look good and feel amazing in front of people because hack is sharp. So how, you know, musicians write a good song and express themselves, you know, my job is my expression. So when I'm at my happiest, I produce the best, you know, the best, the best shows, the best production, the best, I'm the best version of myself. And because of this litigation and who I was, who caused it and why I was in it, it was just too much. So I disappear, I cry. I cry, honey. I cry. Every day I'm crying about something, right? So let me be honest with you. There's nothing wrong with that. And Same. I feel it. And I'm Catholic, um, so I go back to the convent. I sit down with my nuns and I just, I pray. Number two, yeah. right? And I, it's, it's okay not to be okay. Got off social media, stopped everything, focused on this thing. When I came back, moved countries. I went to New York to go live there because I just could not do it. Must you be know? nice, eh? I was like... <laughs> <laughs> Blessed, very blessed and very privileged. And that comes from a privileged yeah. place. And I'm very lucky to be able to have those opportunities. Yeah. But I go through it. I feel it. And yeah. it's important to, you know. And I think people take that for granted, yeah. right? That you feel. I have to. Well, well unfortunately, I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Believe it or not, like all of this, this is my job. Yeah. And it comes with a certain level of tenacity and a certain level of courage and a certain level of perseverance. But I shall get it. I cry. I cry. I cry. I sit at home, do absolutely nothing and feel it and then get over it. Yeah. yeah. What is it that you want to be remembered for? I think I want to be remembered as a great South African who did what she could to inspire other young South Africans, especially women, you know, especially in a country where you think you could only be a, a, a politician or a football player or a, an actress. You could actually be just a TV host yeah. and, you know, smash it out the park. Yeah. I want to be remembered as somebody who was uh, hardworking, super fun. And just, uh, you know, I always I'm a badass swana girl. Yeah. Yeah. And that's yeah. how I feel about myself. I'm just a conqueror. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. you have been a, a great inspiration. I have watched your journey literally from the beginning, from your our YFM days. Yeah. Um, and I, I think I'm in awe of what you continue to achieve. I think South African women and men uh, can take a, a note from your book, uh, your actual book and your, the book of life. Um, and I ask that you continue to just be a complete inspiration. Thank and we you. thank you for being part of her story unplugged. Thank Ladies you. and gentlemen, Bernang Mateva. Thank you. That was so short. Thank you, Tando. 947 Drive with Tando. This is 947.